The Word of God says in verse 1, 1 Corinthians 15, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I preach to you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. That he was buried, that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, that's Peter, then of the twelve, and that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to this present, but some are fallen asleep. And after that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and then in verse 8 the apostle Paul who wrote this said, And last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. Father bless this holy word. As it goes forth, Lord, all I can do, all I can be, is the messenger before you today. But our Heavenly Father, the sweet Holy Spirit now, can go far beyond what I could ever think to do. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. A lot of people, you ask them what the gospel is, they say, well, you live a good life, be a good person, and your good deeds will outweigh your bad deeds, then you have hope that you can go to heaven. A lot of people believe, well, the gospel, if I've been baptized, I know surely I must be saved. Another one says, I've been confirmed. My church confirmed me, so I know therefore I must be a Christian. Someone says to me, well, then preacher, I keep the Ten Commandments, do the best I can. What more could God ask of me? And then they think that's the gospel. Let me say, first of all, the center point of the gospel, and without him it is absolutely no gospel, is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the foundation basis message for everything about this Bible. If what the message is does not point to Christ, you can hear anything. If it's the gospel without Christ, it's no gospel. He is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Therefore, if you're a true witness of God, you're a witness of Christ. For there's no approach to the Father but by the Son. No man knows the Father but the Son. No man knows the Son but the Father. So I declare unto you the gospel. The gospel, therefore, is based upon one absolute event. Remove it from the gospel and it loses its power. So what is that, preacher? The resurrection of Christ from the dead. And the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians is all about the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Then he moves on the latter part of the 15th chapter and he gets into the essence of what kind of body you have. Then he brings in in verse number 50, 51, the great mystery of the rapture of the church of the living God, which is called our blessed hope. And we look for that right now for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. He that hath this hope in himself purifies himself even as he is pure. So let's look at the text. In verse number 20 and 23 of 1 Corinthians 15, it says this, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. People rose from the dead before him, but they died again. The Lord Jesus Christ is the first one to rise from the dead, therefore breaking the power of death. And death could have no more power over him. Therefore, he could not die out again. Hallelujah, God. He broke death's back and then he rose from the dead. Amen. The Bible tells us here in 1 Corinthians 15 that if we do not preach this resurrection of Christ, if it is not real, then our message is fallacious. It is a, it is a lie. It is a, it is a midway barker that's giving you some kind of snake oil this morning if Christ did not rise from the dead. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 that if he did not rise from the dead, our preaching is useless. We're just making too much, we're just making a lot of noise about nothing. If Christ be not risen from the dead, the witness of the early apostles, these are the sent ones that sat by the fire with him. They have no message to preach whatsoever if Christ be not risen from the dead. And then if Christ be not risen, 1 Corinthians 15, then you are still in your sins. You've been living in a, you've been living in a fairy tale land. Those of you that think your sins have been forgiven and you've been made free from the power of sin, it's all been a joke. 
my friend, if Christ be not risen, and if Christ be not risen, your loved ones, and we stand before a huge cemetery right here behind us, you can walk into that cemetery and walk through the necropolis and go through the land of the dead, and there is no hope whatsoever. You ought to get on the internet and read what these atheists and agnostics have to say about dying. You ought to read about the sorrow they're facing and, the, and no hope and, and they've lost their mother and their father and they'll never see them again. And I say to the atheists and agnostics today, what do you have to offer me? You got nothing. You have no message. Who are you? You're nothing more than just another dead man walking upon this earth. But I've got a message. We've got hope. He's called that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. Acts chapter 26 and verse 22 says, Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue to this day, witnessing both to the small and great, saying none of the things and those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Acts 17, 2, And Paul, as a manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ, over and over and over again, because of its absolute importance, because of its top priority, that everything else hinges upon it. If Christ be not risen, then you're still in your sins, and there is no hope for any of us. Matthew chapter 12, verse 39, as Jonas was three days and three nights in the hole in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. This is a type. A type in the Old Testament is a picture and a foreshadowing of something that's coming in the New Testament. Sometimes the type gets into lengthy detail. Sometimes it's kind of a shady thing, but it's still a type. And it's pointing to something in the future. And Jonas was a type of Christ, gone for three days. And on the third day, that whale could hold him no longer. And it opened that big mouth and out came this man, bleached white from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And here he came upon the shore and the first thing out of his mouth, repent! <laughs> no doubt would have scared anybody to death to see what he looked like. But you know something, friend? He is a type of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord said in Matthew 16, verse 4, A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. There shall be no sign given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And then from that time forth, Jesus began to show his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem, suffer many things of the elders, chief priest, be killed, and be raised again the third day. The resurrection of Christ proves some things. Number one, it proves that God is. God raised him from the dead. You're not sure God is? My friend, I'm gonna tell you something. Why don't you try him, try him, try him. Put him to the test. You won't make him mad. Oh no, you won't upset him one bit. Walk out there in the dark one night, look up at that vast array of stars and say to yourself, where'd all this come from? If there's a God in heaven, make yourself known to me and he will make himself known to you. Why don't you do it? You're afraid to, that's why. Because your pride's eating you up. You spend all your life bragging to people how there is no God. You're a Gnostic. You're an atheist. Try him one time. And you'll find out why we're here today and why this preacher's preaching and why we've got joy in our soul and why we know whom we have believed and he's able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. He raises the dead. Hallelujah to God. Proves that God is. Acts 26 and verse 8 says this. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Amen. Amen. Well, I just have a hard time believing that preacher. He raised the dead. He that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot. Who was that? Bound, been dead four days. You know who it is. He came, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. Why? Because life-giving word went forth. The hour is coming when all that in the grave shall hear the voice of the Son of Man, Son of God, and come forth. Amen. At his voice they will. <laughs> the resurrection of Christ proves 
forth that Jesus Christ is who he claimed to be. Listen to this, Romans 1, 4. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Oh, how they wanted to keep him in the tomb. Oh, how the stories that the Jews twisted. And they have a book called The Passover Plot to this day. They just can't stand the idea that this Jew 2,000 years ago came out of a tomb. But my friend, they sealed it. They put the Roman guard there. I'll tell you right now, at the hazard of their own life, they kept that tomb sealed. No way in the world could he come out of that tomb. You kidding? The one who walks through walls on the third day, stone or no stone, he came out of that tomb and he lives today. And I'll tell you right now, he still lives. He's alive forevermore. And death and hell could never touch him again. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ proves that he's the savior of the world. Romans chapter four, verse 25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. The theological idea, the doctrine of how that God put upon the Lord Jesus Christ all the sins of mankind, how he became the propitiation for our sins, all these big words, they're tied up with the Lord Jesus Christ, but God used Christ to tie down the wall between God and man. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who can touch heaven and he can touch man. He's the only one that can do that. In one hand, he has the Father. In the other hand, he's got me. Take my hand, Lord, because I want to touch the Father too. Do you believe that? I believe it with all of my soul. The resurrection of Christ proves that he's the Savior of the world. Romans 10, verse 9, Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. You notice how that the resurrection of Christ is right smack in the middle of salvation? There is no salvation without it. The resurrection of Christ proves that he gives the spirit of life, the spirit of the living God. Let me tell you something. You can believe what I can believe. You can know more about the Bible than I ever thought of knowing. You can quote every catechism there is. You can know everything there is to know about church history. You can be the most dedicated, consecrated, religious person to ever walk the face of this earth. But if you're not born again, let me tell you the difference between you and me. The spirit of the living God dwells within my soul. And if he's not in your soul, I'll know it because there's no relationship. You don't get excited about Christ. You get excited about yourself. You get excited about your achievements. You get excited about all the accolades people have laid upon you. But at the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, nothing moves within you. It ought to. If you know him, it should begin to move today. That he lives, he lives, and he lives within me. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah to God. 1 Corinthians 15, 2, by which also you're saved. If you keep in memory what I preached to you, lest you believed in vain. For I delivered you first of all that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. They cannot be broken. The word of God cannot be broken. And then the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is the spirit of life. Know what he says in Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Scientific achievement has leaps and bounds today. It is progressing like you wouldn't believe. I'm telling you right now, artificial intelligence. Thank you, brother. Artificial intelligence today. They are recreating the lives of loved ones that have gone on. If they can capture their voice, if they can, if they can, if they have the photographs and so forth, they can create an image of a thing moving in front of you that looks like your son, your daughter, your husband, and your wife. Say, so when are they going to do that? Right now. They're doing things that people never even imagined could be done. And they're moving leaps and bounds to the next stage in what they're doing. Everything, men to the moon, DNA, all of that. But here's something. They come up to a brick wall, an insurmountable wall. And what is that? It is the hour of death. They cannot tell you, the wisest man on this earth, what lies one moment beyond death. I can. I can. I can. The rich man died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. That's what the Bible says. Beyond what your eye, what your, tele, what your intelligence, what your technology could ever reach, the moment you leave this body, you are present with the Lord. If you're born again, isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah to God. They cannot cross that barrier. 
because they are completely and totally ignorant of what lies beyond the grave. That's something. In the rebuke of Christ in Luke chapter 24, verse 25, then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expanded to them the scriptures, the things concerning himself. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. John chapter 20, verse number nine. Let me tell you how hard it is to believe in the resurrection of Christ. It's a natural thing. Do you realize that when the Lord Jesus Christ arose from the dead and the women came back and told the disciples that he had arisen from the dead, the disciples thought they were crazy. Did you know that? Have you read that in the Bible? That makes me believe the Bible because it tells you what people are as they are. Not some made up fancy thing. Oh, how in the world? Somebody said, well, Thomas, yes, Thomas. When they told Thomas that he had appeared to them, Thomas said, I'm not gonna believe. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I cannot believe. And, and eight days later, the Lord Jesus Christ appears to them Glory. and Thomas is with them. And man, you just have to put yourself there. When the Lord Jesus appears to these disciples, they're all standing around and he locks his eyes on Thomas and says, Thomas, <laughs> Thomas, how do you think you would have felt? Thomas, come here. <laughs> Come over here, Thomas. Thomas, come here. Put your finger into these nail prints. Thomas, no, no. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> no! I believe. The Lord Jesus said, you're believe because you've seen, Thomas. Blessed are they that believe and have not seen. That's me. I can't put my hand in those nail prints. But you better believe that I believe. Sure as I stand before you this morning. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. Peter proclaimed in Acts chapter number 13, verse number 35. Listen to what Peter said. Do you remember him? Wherefore he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation with the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid to his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Do you believe Peter? Do you believe Peter? He said, I knew him, handled him. I was with him on the mount. He was one of the disciples sat by the way, by, by the fireside with him, watched him raise the dead. He was standing there when Lazarus came forth, watched him walk on the water. That's Peter, folks. Either believe him or you don't. If you believe the Bible, what a world it opens up for you. When you believe the Bible, what the joy that can come into your soul. When you believe the Bible, you can say to yourself, God has communicated to us. Yes, he has, and he's going to again. And he does now. Hallelujah to God for the word of God. Amen.